morning, Facebook Live. <coughs> um, hello from 107. Um, we're back here talking about bikes today. And why don't we start off with acknowledgement of country? Yes, please. Um, we're on the um, Eora Nation at the moment. We um, pay our respects to the Gadigal people um, who traditionally and otherwise own this land. <coughs> um, and we pay our respects to elders past, present, and future. And yeah, good to see you here. Um, good to see your fluoro suit. Thank it's you. It's blinding. Thank you. Um, <laughs> debuting the. <coughs> I shouldn't stand up too much. But... It might rip if he stands up, so just keep <laughs> seated. <laughs> Stay here. <coughs> so um, it's going to be a bit of a wacky one today. What are we going to talk about? Um, yeah, um, thanks for asking, Joe. Um, gonna just talk about like if you've seen a video um, nearby this on our website about um, maintenance tips, safety tips. Today's like comfort tips. Right, the one that you did with Ash a few weeks back. Yeah, yeah. So it's like maybe three, four weeks ago now. Yeah. If you just go back in the, I'm sure it's still on our Facebook page. Uh, just go back a few weeks and surely you'll find it there. Yeah. Have uh, a look at that. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions along the way. Yes, please. Um, just keep them coming and Max here will relay them to us and we'll try to answer the best we can. Um, so we're, do, we're talking about customization today. Yeah, a few things that you can do um, to make sure your bike's the right fit for you. Yep. Um, and yeah, um, seat, a seat's really important. Yeah, course. did you want to start with a seat or? Yeah. Um, can make a big difference, you know, like um, if you're starting to ride a lot for the first time or yeah. like whatever, whatever yeah. bike you ride. Um, if you can sort of feel it, you're noticing, thinking about the seat in the first half an hour, it's going to get uncomfortable and it's probably not the right um, fit for you. But don't, don't seats always, they're always comfortable in the beginning if you're not, a, if you're a new rider anyway, no matter how comfy it is. Yeah, maybe that could be true. I always yeah. get, I'm not going to go into graphics here, but I always get sore bits and oh. bobs after I start, <clears throat> if I start uh, biking again after a long pause. Oh, okay. Um, and then it kind of just, you get used to the, used to the seat and then it kind of goes away. Oh, I have I sort of have it the other way or I have to have more and more comfortable seats. And I'm always after like the most comfortable seat. <laughs> oh, because okay. yeah, right. Okay, so what's a comfortable seat to you? Like a big, big um, puffy one. This one here, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, a big puffy one. Yeah. Basically, it's um like got a good shape. One for each cheek, there yeah. clearly. Yeah. So um, what what kind of bike would you put that on? <clears throat> um, a sort of more like an, on an upright bike yeah. or a sort of, um, as opposed to your kind of racing saddle, yes. which is small and you don't really I sit on that, you, it's just there because you you know, all your weight's on your, um, on the front and you know, you don't See? really cruise much and so they're, you know, useful for going fast, um, but for sitting on for ages, something like this I find it's comfortable. You might want to try a few different ones because yeah. yeah you know everyone's different what's the um, seat on because this is a bike that you commute with regularly right so what's yeah. the seat on this one yeah it looks similar to that one <clears throat> pretty much the same same sort of shape as this one is it comfortable um, it is it's kind of a gel oh a gel sort of one what about um, when you see um what do you call the suspension in, is that part of the seat, or is that usually part of the actual bike, or what's that? Yeah, um, sometimes, yeah, they have them there, but that's really just for show. They don't really bounce that much. Yeah, it's, um, I hate to reveal that today, but... It's for show, don't, people! Don't it's for show! Is that true? It doesn't actually do yes. anything? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, this does more, just a bit of foam, kind of... I'm sure. <laughs> Some have a uh, suspension in the seat pole. I don't really actually rate them very because... well because they're a bit heavy, so you're carrying the weight and right. they're kind of, it's just too much. It just doesn't seem to work like just a, um, a seat with about that much um, 
puff. Yeah, yeah. There. All right. So that's for an upright bike. This is more for a road bike or... Yeah, yeah. road bike, a racer. Or, yeah. We've got our first question. Oh. Yes, thank you. Can, <laughs> a, can a, From Claire, can Hi, a seat Claire. ever be too big or wide? In my experience, um, no, I've never found it. <laughs> I've tried them all. I've got them off exercise bikes. Um, they're built to handle a lot, and I've found that comfortable. Wait, you take seats off exercise bike to put yeah. on your own bike? It's a big squarish sort of thing. It's like a um, big cushion sort of, and you just put that on. You can just sit. Um, you can sit on a bench, just like I'm sitting on now. I could probably... Well, maybe not. Have to try that. But surely, so I, I reckon if you take a seat off an exercise bike, surely that seat would only be good for an upright bike. Yeah. 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 So don't put if you have a racer bike or a road bike, don't put a huge exercise seat on that because that will be no good. Um, <laughs> oh, that's very interesting. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, and um, there are ones that are like off what's called a cruiser bike. Um, it's kind of like got long handlebars like this and it's big and it's got um, sort of cups in it. Yeah. And yeah, they're pretty nice. They're pretty, um, pretty comfortable, I find. Thanks, Claire, for the excellent question. If you have any more questions about exercising or fluorescent suits or whatever, keep, keep them coming. Um, okay, so do we have time to show? We can't really show how to change a seat, can we? Um, well, it's you pretty simple. Yes, it's go on. too simple to explain. Okay. Because, um, yeah, you just undo these nuts here. Most of them have something like this. Uh, more modern ones have an Allen key <coughs> kind of one. But that just goes onto the pole, like so, right. and do it up. You can move it forwards, uh, up and down. <coughs> Yep. Um, it's usually best to straight along like that. Yep. And you can also move it forward that way or back that way a couple of inches so that you're sitting on the bike like so and you feel like you want to be here um, and you can move the seat back and it's more comfortable here. Oh, okay. Excellent mm -hmm. advice. Okay, so that's the seat. Okay. Um, what else can we modify to make the bike more comfortable? Um, I find the grips are really important. Yes. So what are the grips again? The grips okay. are... These... Um, <coughs> the handlebars. Just, yeah, just what, yeah, what you hold. Handlebar grips. Um, uh, yeah, they <coughs> come in different, different shapes. These ones here are kind of ergonomic type of thing, but you know, the rubber has gotten a bit old and it's a bit... Of, I always Sticky. feel like the grips on my bike always roll around and they always fall off and I always oh. have to kind of tap them back in every five minutes or right. so. Yeah, that's annoying. That's that super annoying. Is, to is it a common thing or is my yeah, bike just crap? It's a common thing. Okay, right. Um, what you need to do is because there's a bit of oil in there yep. or it might be a bit of space, yep. so take them off. Yep. I'll show you how to do that. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Um, clean. The handlebars and yep. with soapy water to get any oil off. Clean the actual grips themselves, get all the soapy water off, and then put them back on. And if it still does that, um, just take them off again and put like one layer of electrical tape. Yeah, right. Around, yep. you know, or masking tape or yep. anything. It doesn't take much. Yeah. So then just put them on again. And that great tip. Off. Simple, simple, but I'm sure it works great. Here are some grips yeah. that you wanted to put on. Did you wanna? Did you wanna put them on now or? Yeah, why not? What um, what tools do you need? A screwdriver. Oh, yeah. I didn't expect that. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Okay, and why is that? Um, because we just need to get the screwdriver under the handle grip, like so. Here I go. I'm gonna go for a walk. Yeah, it's all right. Did you wanna flip the bike over, or you wanna keep it down there? Um, I think I'll flip it over. Yep. Actually. Yep. So when you're doing this, just grab the frame in one hand and the forks in the other hand. <coughs> oh no, stained my... No, it's, stained it, it hasn't fluorescent. stained your beautiful fluorescent. It's beautiful. It's still good. <coughs> so these are the grips that are coming off. Oh, they do a bit 
please? Yeah, that one's got a problem right here. Because you told me before that it's actually harder than it, what it looks to change these things. Yeah, it is a funny kind of technique. It's one of the oldest sort of techniques I remember. Oh, okay. Yeah. And is there anything I can do to help? Um, maybe in a sec. So you're just putting the screwdriver underneath yep. the... We're live here, people. We're not... We don't know if this is going to work. Well, it's a different kind. This one, these ones actually have a plastic. Well, and, yeah, uh, hard, it's hard so plastic. So instead, Can just we'll just it wiggle off? them off. Yeah, luckily they get wiggly, but I don't know how you'd get these ones off. Aren't you happy you tuned in this morning? <laughs> oh, see. These. Oh, my God. <laughs> And these ones, like some modern ones, have a little Allen key sort of gripper thing, which I didn't have working, but well. So oh, you might need a, a hard little, plastic inside as well. A little bike Allen key right. for this one. Yep. But a normal one, 90% of them. So this is just what it looks like under any grip in your norm, normal yeah. bike. Yeah, yep. that's it. So if, so if it's a normal one, <coughs> should I do this one? Well, that was simple. Yeah, it went on pretty easy because these are, I like these because they're not rubber. Yep. Um, they're yeah. They're just leather ones or are they? Kind of leatherette. Vi kind of vinyl? Vinyl. Some sort of. They're nice, like got a bit of the sponginess. Yeah. They're so, beautiful. But so if you want to take your grip off, get that screwdriver just in a little bit there. And then. You can either use the WD-40, with the little spray tube thing to spray in there. Uh, and I've actually found <coughs> that water works just as well. Yeah? Yeah, so I'll just... Do you want me to get, have, um, me to get that? Um, do you have any water going? I can get some. Uh, yeah, just a little... Little cup. Water. Bear with us, people. <laughs> think of a question. Yes, think of a question. If it's going to do with handlebars. We actually have got a question. Who is it from, Max? Um, it's from Shelley. Hi, Shelley. And Shelley says, my bike has no gears. The yep. hills are too difficult. Should I replace it for one with gears or can you convert it? Oh, I was going to say, yes, replace it immediately. That's my advice as well. Are you using it to commute oh, to work? Sense. Are you using it? What are you using it for? If you're using it to commute to work and you're just finding it too difficult, get another bike. Um, True, because they're not really compatible because a bike with gears has a bigger, wider sort of um, wheel at the back with all the gears. So it can be tricky. Um, yeah, if that's just to um, keep that bike for a another purpose yeah like a sunday bike yeah you just go and you're if you feel like you're too unfit it's not you it's the bike and the hills it's just not a um what do you call it a bike with no gears fixie fixie, fixie yeah a fixie yeah. is no good with hills no not to me at least you get fit but yeah but so. you'll pay the price to get there shelly get a new bike <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so I've just got the screwdriver in a little bit, and there's a gap there, so just let a bit of water go down there. <laughs> just a couple of drops, <laughs> no more than that. Sorry. And so now the screwdriver will go in a little bit more. All right, yep. And see if it wiggles. Usually have to do this a fair bit. Now the water goes a little bit further in there. And now put the screwdriver down <coughs> to one side so you're pulling it away from the, the metal yeah. and it's breaking that seal yeah. that will be on there from if they've been there for a while. Oh, so now it's there. Now right. A bit further. Now it's right down there. Are oh, you putting more? Yeah. Wow. <coughs> and now it'll start to move here. Just wiggle that and then pretty soon. Oh, right. Excellent. And yeah, I think with these ones, I'll have to put a bit of tape on there. Just yep. moves, yep. moves a bit. That's all right. You, it's not dangerous, but it is annoying. It's doing that. So you can just simply put some tape around it, and that'll keep it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'll just 
gonna go one, yep. two, three, four, and if that's not enough, another layer. Okay, sweet. Mm. Excellent. Did you want to? And yeah, as far as choosing them, yeah, what you usually get from your average priced um, mountain bike is a kind of a hard plastic sort of thing. And yeah, if you can buy these at a um, bike shop, probably, I think. Yeah. I got these off a, an old reed that was kind of destroyed. Another exercise bike that he stole them from? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I stole them. <laughs> Claire has another question. Yes. What would the reasons be to change your handle grips? She's never thought about it. Oh yeah, just comfort really. Um, Cause that's sort of where you contact the bike. It's like the seat, the hands yeah. and the feet. Yes. Yeah. Um, and yeah, um, on my bike I've put some old um, handlebars on. Oh, this is a yeah, they're, oh, they're right. the old ones because they come back, right? Um, pointing back towards the bike, and I find that the sort of Dutch style to be comfortable, like just riding like this. Whereas most ones are like this, yeah. And it's it's okay for like going hard forward, but I like just to sit back. Um, We've yeah. talked about this before because Stu and I have very different riding styles when it comes to bikes. Because as he said, he likes that. Kind of cruisy Dutch style fluffy tire vibe, whereas I have the road bike with um, a, a straight handlebars and very skinny hard tires because I, I can't with these fluffy ones. Like I can't. Mm. So it's very it's all about preference really, um, and your comfort and what you're using it like for. So it's it's not like one is better than the other one. I think my my. <laughs> wow. Okay. Hey. <laughs> um, um, I don't know why I can say that. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, of the, um, because they're bouncy and nice, and you don't sort of feel sort of jutted like, um, like on hard tires. But mostly because, um, say, you're driving at night, or you don't see that little curb oh, bit, yeah. which is about this high, and it's a sharp little curb of a driveway or something. You go into it fairly fast, and you haven't had time to, you know, how you lift up the handlebars to get over yes. the curb. You haven't done that because you haven't seen it and you go bang straight into that and psh, you have to change your tube. Then, or you shatter your elbow like I did a few. Mm. Actually, that, ha that exact strong. thing happened to me like two months ago and I uh, fractured my elbow. So, um, but it's all good now. Um, well, we just have to agree to disagree still. Yeah, yeah, but um, you like the sort of frictionless, it's, um, it's sort of you go faster for less effort with the yes. hard tyres, don't you? And yes. On a smooth surface, yes. really nice. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's mm. true. But I'm always hopping over things. And, Are you? Yeah. With this, this heavy thing? Yeah, yeah, because I've got just the biggest tyres I could find and then I make them so sort of kind of, I can just... <laughs> press into the hat. Is that how, okay, if you could just see, I don't know, you probably couldn't oh, see, but when it. he pressed the tire, you um, can basically see the, how little air there is. I mean, that's low tire pressure. It's like a, just a balloon or something, but if I hit something, it's enough volume to handle that. And also if I have something precious in yeah, the front, yeah. um, it gets a bit of Buffer. Yeah, a bit of buffer. Um, so you just when you when you say you jump over things, you kind of just do the oh, and you kind of lift the. Is that what you do when you um, jumping, jumping around? I do the one-footed curb lift. If you've ever seen one-footed curb lift, everybody <laughs> write this down. <laughs> this is gold. Sorry, can you so can you okay, explain I that? I can demonstrate. All right, here we go. Okay, so I was. Here, right. Like. Yep. And the road is, I'm on the road. Yeah. The curb is on yep. my left here. Yep. And there's some cars and trucks coming by me. Hong Kong. Yeah. Yep. Could be doing that. I'm like, you know, I want to get off the road right now. Yep. I'll slow down. Yep. <clears throat> roll up to the curb with the right foot on the pedal. Yep. Put my left foot on, on the, the curb. curb. Yep. yep. Now I've got both feet on the ground, pick up the front wheel, <gasps> place it over the curb. Yes. And the most fun bit 
is when you just keep going. And off he goes into the distance. <laughs> he's never coming back. Oh, he's coming back. Um, wait, so, wow, okay. Well, I kind of do, I kind of do that as well, but I don't actually go onto the curb. I kind of just rest, if it's a traffic light or something, mm -hmm. I kind of rest on the curb with one leg. And then when the light turns green, I kind of push myself with the leg that's on the curb to give it a good, mm. uh, yeah. yeah. Um, what did you say it was called? One-legged curb kick. I just made that up. Oh, oh it's, okay, sorry. I thought it was like an <laughs> the actual old one -legged thing. one-legged curb lift. Curb, it sounds curb like a, something you would do at a gym. <laughs> Two, ten one-legged curb lifts. <laughs> Sorry, people. It's Saturday morning. I'm sorry we're a bit wacky, but um, this is what you came here for, right? Mm. And then there's the no-legged curb lift. It's for pros, <laughs> <laughs> pros only. <laughs> yeah, which is, and you could try this in a grassy area. Yeah, don't uh, try this on a uh, busy right. traffic cur with hard curbs. What is mm. a no-legged? Okay, I'm coming up to the curb, straight on it. Want to get off the road? Um, you lift up the front, you know how you lift up the front and it just, you're moving forward and you pop to the curb. Yes. And as soon as you lift, um, lifted the front over, you put all your weight on your pedal and it, you find that the back just comes with you because your weight um, moves from the back to the front, your whole bike just pops over up, over the curb. So well, it's a good how high of a curb are we talking about? Like what? That, yeah. You've done a curb that with this kind of bike. Kind of works, yeah. Again, we're we're telling everybody to wear a helmet, not to do this. Yeah, and yeah. if you do it side on to the curb, total disaster. Just come off really quickly. Yes, yeah, so you have to go st straight on, make exactly, sure that you're yeah. in the right angle um, to there. And would this curb. only be good to do with big floppy tires, or is this something that I could do with my skinny? Uh, um, you'd have to do it just a bit slower. Okay. And it is a slow thing. You don't come up at full speed. You go kind That's of as slow as you can without falling off, just up to the curb. Lift. Woo. Wow. Keep going. Yeah, maybe we'll make another video, maybe outside one day. Where we With padding. Padding and helmets. Bike stunts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Perfect. We're going to need more suits. Yeah. <laughs> and more padding. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. Okay, so um, that's the grips. That's the grips. This is a nice question. Yes. What's your favourite bike ride in Sydney? Oh. Just off the top of my head, Cook's River. Mmm. Uh, right. Yeah. What do you think? Well, speaking of um, bike rides in Sydney, all the, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there's all these pop up bike lanes that are. I haven't actually. Popping up noticed. everywhere. Because of um, the pandemic, we obviously want to reduce the time that we spend on public transport and in close contact with other people. So now is actually a great time to get that bike out of the garage and get it fixed up and use that as your um, main way of transport. This is my opinion. Um, yeah. You can get um, bike mats as well. We have we have them at the Bower. When you come in, you can pick up a bike mat for free. It's full of... It, Shows you all the routes. Um, uh, that's that's reminded me of one really good one, Burke Street. Ooh. Goes from pretty much the airport to Woolloomooloo Bay, a straight oh. line, and you'll just see. And it's all bike lane. Everything. Yeah, there might be a little, a few, bit of um, weird bits around the road building um, stuff around Tempe that interrupts it, but it, at least from Tempe and Newtown and stuff. Um, Get onto it in Redfern, Waterloo, yeah. and just go through Surrey Hills all yeah. the way down. If I arrive at Woolloomooloo Bay, it's beautiful. Oh, nice! Yeah. Also, this this reminded me of um, a Facebook group that I'm a part of. It's called Sydney Riders, um, Sydney Bike Riders New and Old. It's filled with uh, bike enthusiasts, people who talk about uh, what's the best bike path from X to Y. What is the what's a good Bike, um, bike ride to recommend. Uh, join it. It's a. I feel like it's a great resource, especially because well, I only started commuting like six months ago regularly. So I'm, I'm. I feel like I'm sort of a new 
uh, bike rider. Mm, yeah, I might have a look at that. Yeah, it's, it's a, I really recommend it. It's filled with great tips and um, fellow fe like-minded bike riders. Join it. Highly recommend. Um, now, pedals are kind of important as well, especially if you have big feet. Um, you want big pedals. Um, is that the rule? The bigger your feet, the bigger the pedals? I reckon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, because you want your foot to be like it to be under your whole kind of foot. Um, and yeah, you can. I like the ones that are kind of plastic with um, little bits here that really stick to your shoe. Right, yep. Because, I mean, it's not common that you sort of slip on the pedal a bit, but if it's wet. Oh, that's um, the worst. Yeah, oh, it's, just, yeah. it's nice to feel secure yep. on the pedal. Yep. Um, like that. And you might have really heavy pedals on your old bike. You can, if you want, you can swap them for really light pedals, which are just cheap. Um, you can get them at the Bauer off another bike. Um, for a few dollars. You can get all sorts of, I, I don't know if you've talked about this before on the Facebook thing with Ash, but you can obviously get a lot of bike parts at the Bauer, you can get your bike serviced at the Bauer by Stu as well. Um, yeah, so come and have a look in the shop if you're ever out for yeah, cheap there are bike parts, recycled bike parts. And a few bikes ready to go as well. Excellent, nice yeah, ones. there's a beautiful um, Danish 7-speed, if I can just <laughs> Mm. Uh, advertise that. Yeah, it's beautiful. Very, going cheap. It's on our Instagram page, so go and have a look at that. It's absolutely stunning. Mm. There's, I think, one old style racer. Yep. And yeah, some other ones. Side note, sorry. Mm. I, I quickly um, I went on Gumtree last night to look at bikes, and the bike, I feel like the bike price has skyrocketed. Really? Yes. Oh. Like, I think it's because the demand for bikes mm -hmm. right now is so high. Mm -hmm. That people are either either um, not giving up their bikes or charging more more money for them. Let me know in the comments if you agree with me. Mm, interesting. It's just something I've noticed. Mm. Well, um, our, the bikes at the bar are still really cheap. Yes. So yeah. get, get it while it lasts. Yeah. Um, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, pedals. Sorry for side tracking. Okay, you. pedals. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Big big pedals with big feet. Did you want to show us how to change one? Oh yeah. Because there was a tricky, didn't you say that there was tricky a tricky part to this? That's it's not correct. as easy as it looks, guys. That's right. Um, what is so, the tricky bit? What is that? <laughs> this is a special pedal tool, um, which has just a certain size here. It's actually a 5 eighths spanner size. Ooh. So yeah. Um, so if you have a set of spanners and one's five, eight, that will fit on there as well. A shifting spanner doesn't fit on there because it's such a small space between the pedal and the that arm thing. Would you need this tool to change your pedal? If you didn't have the spanner, yeah. Okay. So, Wait, when you say spanner, you mean just any spanner? Like... Um, no, sort of like a fixed spanner. You oh, know, you've got yeah. a shifting spanner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The shifter spanner doesn't work. Maybe a small one might but <coughs> yeah so what you need is like a set of spanners that size yep or one of these okay um, so you could get um you get a set of spanners for like 20 bucks or something or maybe that from a bike shop okay um, as well it's pretty heavy duty um, yeah it's these are great because you get a lot of power and they do get a bit stuck on they can after all that pedaling yes now if you so I put that on there and wanted to um, remove that, you might think I'd want to twist it off anti-clockwise. Like, Righty tidy, like, lefty loosey. Yeah, you'd think I'd want to lefty loosey it. <gasps> like oh, you everything don't? Everything on, else on the bike just about, but no. And it's a um, common mistake um, that people will try to put a pedal on to this left hand side. Um, doing it the normal way and it will strip the thread because this is soft aluminium and it will just um, yeah you can destroy this um, I forgot what they're called I just sorry crank arms crank crank arms crank arms yeah um, crank arms soft metal so to remove it we'll just go the other way oh, um, yeah, to the right and yeah. just on the left um, on the right hand side 
it's just normal, but on the left hand side, the thread's opposite. It's to do with the fact that you're pedaling and you don't want the pedal to wind itself. Uh, off. I was actually just going to um, ask why would they bother, but actually that makes perfect sense because yeah. then it would come off eventually, maybe. Yeah. If it's not on properly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It forces it wrong. Yeah. So. Do you want me to hold on to anything? Or do you want to flip it uh, over? Or? Uh, let me see. I think I'll just do it like this. I want to um, get a really good position, good body position, so that you have a lot kind of, of string. Like, yeah, I'm sort of blocking the camera now. I'll move it this way. Yeah, you want to get the strength position. Yeah. So with the arm pointing out that way, yeah. and this thing pointing out this way, I should be able to just push down, use all my strength to. So this is the left off. pedal. Yeah, yep. just on the left hand side because yep. it doesn't have the sprockets and stuff. Yep. Which are on the right hand side. Yep. So now, this, and that's come off pretty easily, but you just have to push that down. Yep. And it comes off. Oh, great. Etc. And then when you're going to wind, put it back on again. Just up to the left. Yeah, I didn't know about this uh, left hand left hand pedal until you told me about it a, a few moments ago. So this is definitely news to me. Yeah, it's hilarious when you when you're first learning about it and you just start doing it. And this is funny. To not the right going size. Anywhere. It's not yeah. going on. Harder, harder. No, I'll get it. I'll push it in. You and get it you right in, then you realize that. It's just going, it's floating around, and it's just like... And then you stripped the whole thing yeah. there. <laughs> and then you have to do something bigger, which is change the um, crank arm. Oh, um, is, is that hard to do? Uh, not so much. It doesn't yeah. look it. Is no. it just one, one bolt here? It's kind of... The trickiest part is you have to have another tool, which is That's a crank, right. crank arm puller. Oh, jeez. It's like a... Yeah. Screw, you screw it in and then it has a pin that pushes through. Do it's not have, hard, but it's just it's just it's just more tools. I see. Mm. Okay. I don't think I brought brought that one. Okay, but that's yeah. all right. Yeah. It's good to know. Doodle. Yeah. Um. So we're talking pedals, we talked grips, we talked seat, we talked tires. What else? I've got a question actually, which yes. is somewhat related to comfort because some can be uncomfortable to carry. What locks do you use? Mm -hmm. Great question there. What locks do you use, Stu? Well, to be honest... Um... None. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. Just no. leave my um, fluorescent overalls <laughs> over them. And Nobody safe. touches them <laughs> yet. So you have one of those. What's that yeah, called? It's just a. It's just a little combination lock. Um, if a thief, if a bicycle thief, that bicycle thief, it's out there somewhere. Oh yeah. If they see this, they will just snip it just for fun. It's just like you go through that so quickly with your wire cutters. Um, so why do you use that one? Because I never leave my bike out. For the last five six months, I haven't been going out. Yeah. Um, because. If you're watching from the future, that was a virus. You probably know about that. I'd what? Like to know how it turned out. Maybe you can tell us. Yeah, tell us <laughs> in the comments. <laughs> how it turned uh, out. Uh, <laughs> and any of these kind of locks, they can be snipped through. So if you leave it out, sort of like in a place um, which is easy to steal from, like if I would just leave it outside a 7 Eleven, my bike, or a service station, or if I don't hope for the best. Best thing is a D lock. Um, yes, solid, uh, so you can't sniff those. Yeah. Um, Definitely, I think it's worth, it, especially if your bike is on the nicer side. I'm not saying that this is not nice, but it's, if you invest a uh, large amount of money in your bicycle, I would suggest you invest a sum of money on your lock as well. Um, D lock, so it's basically just a, the lock itself is in a, a, a cylinder there. Yeah. Isn't it? And then the, um, the rest You've of the thing makes seen a D. Them. Yeah. Still not any guarantee. Of Someone course not. Bike, of course um, not. Yeah. Yeah. I personally, I have a D lock plus I use a chain, like a heavy duty 
metal chain, so I have two locks, and my bike is not even that nice. But I've had enough bikes stolen in my lifetime that I, I thought, hmm. if I can be on the safe side, I'd rather have that. Um, and plus, if you have multiple locks, then it's gonna take more time for the thief to cut through it, and the chances are that they actually don't end up stealing your bike. So hmm, there might be a bike next to yours yeah. with one lock. Yeah, exactly. So it's I think it's definitely worth investing investing in. I didn't used to think that, but I do mm. I do now. And I wouldn't I wouldn't leave my bike out for yeah. long periods of time mm. anywhere. Just don't leave your bike outside yes. is probably the best advice. If you can take it in with you wherever you're going, probably do that. I I've heard mm. though that people are people's garages and like underground car spaces are getting broken into as well. So nowhere is safe. Yeah, don't get a bike. It just get stolen. <laughs> <laughs> just walk everywhere. No, it's yeah, be safe. Um, but yeah, D lock. Yeah, I also like um, getting a bit of chain yep. and a decent padlock. Oh, sorry, so yeah, yeah, I, I to... have that as well. Right, yeah. yeah, I have all the locks. <laughs> <laughs> like a chain. I have a huge padlock. I have the D lock. Yeah, mm, it's you just... could. I think you could buy probably a tracker chip. A um, what? A tracking chip. Oh you could yeah. Put somewhere <gasps> that no one could see. And would you do? You is that something you would go do? Go and chase it. Not something I would do. No. I'd be interested to hear about it. If it, you know, how cheap it is now to put a tracker on your equipment. Maybe Max knows. I've got no idea. No. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> um, yeah. You have a great question there. Uh, keep them coming. Keep them coming. I've I've got a um, question oh. for myself. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that you'll answer as well. <laughs> what other things um, can make you comfortable on your ride? I would say big one for me is fresh air. Um, like I was on a cycle path today on the um, Sydney Park Road yeah. coming down from the highway, and there's a great big cycle path. Um, and but you're next to two lanes of cars and trucks, and uh, if the breeze is going this way, you'll be you have to hold your breath from the highway to Tempe, kind of thing. So, I always choose my ways. Um, I take the laneway next to main roads if I yep, can because yep. main roads are on ridges, less, yep. less hills, yep. and yeah, on the, on the laneway, there's no one there, um, you know, all the air is clear, and you don't have to worry about cars that much that's a good point we've talked about this before i don't know if you touched touched upon the subject in your last one but because Stu is always of the mindset that even even if it adds 15 minutes more to your commute or your bike ride it's worth taking that alley well not alleyway but that laneway behind the busy highway because as you said the air is clearer you don't have to worry about cars going right next to you mm, it's, it's just worth it it's so worth it mm. but that's definitely a good point um when talking about comfort for sure mm. definitely yeah like you can look at a map and say you want to go to the beach that day yeah see what what parks are in between you and the beach yep. just head for one and yeah go through a nice park because that will mm. you know make you feel good yeah for a while yeah and, that's true mm. this is also a good comfort point I find having a rack and or panniers makes my bike riding experience so much more enjoyable from Mashley. Oh, yeah. Which I would agree, big comfort thing. If you're not yeah. riding with a backpack on, oh, the way worst. nicer. Let the bike carry the weight, not your back. Yes. I, yes. Thank you, Max. That's great. That's, a, that's great advice. That's, Definitely. Yeah. And you can have your jumper in, in there, your yep. coat in there, yep. different shoes in there. You can have like your food, your lunches, or in your big basket, Everything. that's why I have that. And this is great, because you can get a milk crate from any cafe, <laughs> Yeah, or oh, any laneway. We don't endorse stealing No, 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 I didn't mean that. No, <laughs> I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. Um, how have you fixed that milk crate? Good question, Max. Glad you asked. I didn't ask it, this person asked it. I'm, <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm, I'm stealing from them. Max! <laughs> <laughs> Intellectual property. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, one of the things I like most about my bike is that I can put on here a um, case of beer or soft drink. <laughs> <laughs> or non-alcoholic beverages, soft people. Drink we, don't in, we don't endorse drinking. Mineral water. The, the, yes. the case of, of... Mineral water. Yeah, organic mineral water will come up to about here. Yeah. 
And then I have my shopping, which is another bag up here. It's, oh. up, it's up about here. I'm just looking over Are the top. Are you kidding? No. Oh my god. No. <laughs> I just. Is that? Get this. Put this over the top. It's like a little funny little modern hockey strap. That's. Sort of... And this is all stuff that you can make yourself. Like this is. Look at that. That's just a piece of like um, elastic, elastic hockey strap with a little fastener yeah. there. Super easy to make at home. Yeah, or just an hockey strap over the thing. But so, how do you actually fix the... Well, oh, yeah. we're getting to it, Max. We're getting to it. Max. <laughs> we're getting to it. impress you with just... Yes. Yeah. I am Stop impressed. Oh, yeah. You're stealing people's <laughs> questions and rushing us. And it's like... It can take my weight. Oh, I could ride like this. Well, we don't endorse that either. So don't do it. Um, so, but, yes. how's it done? Okay, let's turn the bike over. I just noticed your bike doesn't have. Wait, how did you? Oh, interesting. Okay, I see. Because Stu actually helped me put a milk crate on my bike. So, what I did, this is with Stu's help, he gave me one of these. What do you call these? Racks? Bike racks? Mm -hmm. Pannier. Oh, Pannier. Is that. Okay, I'm sorry. No, uh, pannier. I didn't pannier? Know. That's a pannier, yeah. Okay, and you, it's a pannier rack. Then you yeah. Is that the, the brand bags. name or is that the name? No, that's like, the, it's, a, it's a pannier rack. I don't know where pannier comes from. It sounds like a brand name. French, I think. Tell us in the comments if we're right. Pannier. Anyway, this thing. And it was too big for my bike because it has to fit, obviously. It has to go here. This is where you fasten it. Anyway, so you know what I did? I took an angle grinder. And I and I cut it so it fit to my bike, and then I just uh, fasten it with um, cable ties. Cable ties, and that's how easy it was. What have you done here? So you've done something similar. Yeah, pretty much the same as what yours is. It's important that your uh, these struts here go into this point, into the axle. Yes, yeah, because um, that's how it fastens to the. Yeah. Well, on, on those ones, they actually fasten to the frame, so they go in these little holes here. See, there's a different oh, one. Oh, yeah, right. Okay, yep. It's not as strong. Um, and this one, it's kind of um, thin rods. These are kind of a bit more sturdy. Yeah, that looks really sturdy. <laughs> yeah, this so is kind of a yeah. rack off a cheaper bike. So um, what have you done? You Have you cut? So... Okay, so there's, a, there's holes in the end of it. Um, because it's supposed to be a rack that goes in there. The spear, this is called a spear, um, goes through it. <clears throat> and it used, to, it used to continue along here and it'd be on the back. And so, yeah, that's what you're looking for is a rack that doesn't go into the frame. It goes into the axle here because yeah, right. it's... Just, it's the way things are set up, it's, it works better, have more strength. Um, then that just goes down to here and it attaches onto the milk crate um, by some cable ties. I've used an old coat hanger here and you just want it to go in there because all the force is coming this way from gravity and the beer. Oh, I've been water. <laughs> And so that can't go anywhere. I can stand on that. Don't. You, you saw me lying on it. Didn't even move. Because that angle, there's no room for bending. It's a lot, a lot of um, strength there. That's the one point of contact. Right. The second point is on the forks here. So on normal forks, there's a hole going through. Yes, right. right? Just above the tires for brakes. Do you want to... Where it is. It's for yep. Yep. on some bikes. It's for brakes. On this one, it's for the reflector. So it goes through there, and on the other side of that, I've got a piece of metal which is a, a bracket from a reflector. Um, so it's like your reflector's in there. And you've taken off the reflector and pushed a bit of metal down. And the point is so that this milk crate and all this weight will just rest on this bracket, yeah. it's cable tied together as well. And it's, um, you can see it wants to be attached to the forks, but not the frame. Yes, yeah. Um, because that's what it's, it's the handlebars and the forks move together. 
frame stays there. So what's this that you fastened? What is this? Just... That's a coat hanger. And I've just wrapped it up. Oh, so this is all DIY. It's extremely. Finished. Well, this is all. <laughs> this is what... <laughs> <laughs> it's this is what the Bauer this is what the Bauer stands for. We're all about DIYing, trying out what works. You don't if you if you can't make it on the first go, try something else. Um, it's a bit of kind of. That's right. It's a it's an old Australian tradition. Um, if if you can't fix it with a bit of fencing wire, forget it. Just burn it. Or yeah. donate it to the Bauer. <laughs> <laughs> Before you burn it, um, and I was I was going to say about the cable ties because um, mm -hmm. make sure. So this is quite skinny. This cable tie is this is this okay? Um, that one's not connected to anything. That's oh, just it's just for fun. Loose. Yeah, I've got a more thicker one. Yeah, put two or three on or there. more. As as yeah. if you feel as long as you feel comfortable and confident that that is not going to go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Before cable ties, I used to use. Back in the 1800s, you used to use just um, a bit of wire and just, um, you know, like thread it yeah. through and then twist. Yeah, twist oh, the yeah. wire, it's fine. An old coat hanger. Well, that looks super really. sturdy, the coat hanger. Yeah, that looks, it's not really going thick. anywhere. Yeah. And another question from Claire Is there any reason to put the milk crate on the front of the bike Good as question, opposed Claire. to the back? Yes. Definitely. <clears throat> you know about this one. I convinced you to put. Your milk crate on the front. When I started at the Bauer, I was a I was a, a milk crate in the back kind of person, and then Stuart was like, "No, no, 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 no! You put it in the in the front." Yeah. Why is that? Um, it's because on the on the um, sort of gravity spectrum of the bike, your weight is at the back, and um, if you put more weight on the back, it's more weight on this tire and it makes the front less um, maneuverable yeah. and also when you stand up sometimes there's a bit of a hill you know you stand yeah. up your whole load the yeah, back will start swinging yeah, back and forth and it'll true. kind of wreck itself and just feel like really weird um, now if when it's here it just takes a little bit of time to get accustomed to having that weight so That's you have true. the um, soft drinks on there, you, yeah, you find it sort of moves, moves a lot, but you'll you get feel, used to yeah, it quite fast. It. Yeah, yeah, you feel the center of gravity is between you and that weight, and it's really maneuverable. Um, and I like, I, I like seeing that my stuff is still there yeah, and yeah. not three hundred meters behind me Which on the to you. on the West Botany Road. <laughs> 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 I'm not gonna tell the story. Um, that's the story when I fractured my elbow but it's it's a long story but I like just oh, seeing right. that the stuff is still there precious stuff and you're yeah. always thinking about your stuff if it's on the back you're like oh I wonder if it's still there you have a look in there <laughs> yes and then it's not there anymore yeah I, I definitely recommend putting putting it in front but if you have a little dog I sometimes put my dog in there oh. be careful obviously with the uh, I have like harnesses mm. in place, but she likes sitting in the front and eating mm. now. It's I a, love seeing that. Yeah, <laughs> it's very common in Sydney, I feel. Um, thanks, Claire, uh, for that awesome question. If you guys have any more questions, be like Claire. Send them our way. Um, how much time do we have left, Max? Ten minutes. Okay. What would be a good, good um, topic to, to finish on? Well, we can never um, go on about safety too much. Oh, yes. Um, in case yep. you've missed any of our previous yep. um, talks on safety. So what's, what, what are the, um, the minimum, minimum, what do you call it? The stuff that you need uh, to legally ride. Right, the legal requirements. Yes. It's actually a bit of a list. Yes. Um, you've got your front reflector. So which, what's that? Um, what's the front reflector? Yeah. It's a, there's a white one and a red one, and <clears throat> it's that. Ah, yeah. Yep. So that when it gets dark, headlights hit that really oh, lights yep. up. Yep. Um, yeah, I believe the police can fine you if you don't have that one, and then a red one on the back, and also a bell, which is great to have. I 
don't never really use mine. I like to sort of sneak up on people and then just sort of be gone, not scare them very respectfully. I'm on the footpath. <laughs> Just go because sometimes if that happens behind me, I'm Especially like. Especially that, that. That's a hectic bell. Ah. What you, you know, it's like I'm more like, oh, excuse me, just coming through here, and I'll just go like that. But you know, it's good to have if there are people like on their phones walking up into which your is very park. common in Sydney. Yeah. yeah. What I like to do is I like to see them if there's people in the way. I I ring the bell early, so it's like a ding ding in the in the oh, yeah. so they can hear mm -hmm. that oh someone's coming, but I'm not going to be right mm -hmm. behind them and go <laughs> yeah no 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 I try to be very respectful and I because I scare easily so if a if there's a bicyclist like you behind me in this mm -hmm. I'll jump I'll jump mm -hmm. yeah it'll it's not nice so what so reflectors back and front bell yeah what else helmet. Yeah, I believe, I believe you still um, still have an archaic law about having to wear some sort of head protection, um, but it won't save you. Um, the best protection... It, it certainly helps. With low branches um, and stuff like that. But yeah, it helps. It help. Yeah, it helps. To... I love uh, my helmet because yeah. the my last accident that I had, I, I, I don't know if I would have cracked my skull, but because I... Really? I actually hit my head on the pavement quite hard, and um, uh, I would have been in trouble if I didn't have that. And mind you, I was going very low speed, very, mm. very low speed, and I still managed to kind of whiplash my head onto the pavement. So definitely wear your helmets. Wear your helmets. Okay. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take that advice. Yeah, um, you should. You should. What else? Um, do you have to wear a floral vest or a floral <laughs> overall? No, I do this by choice. <laughs> no, You're hard to miss in those. I don't think, I've never had a policeman, to, you know, um, insult my wardrobe. Yeah. Luckily. Yeah. It may happen. Because I feel like I heard at some point that at night the floral vests were a legal requirement. Have you guys heard of that? I don't know. Maybe. No, no. Maybe. I mean, very good idea if yeah. you're riding at night yeah. um, or in the day. This is why I have yellow at the front. One of the reasons because um, oh. I want um, it to. I want to be noticed in someone's peripheral vision you yeah. know, all the time. There's yeah. so many situations where you're just on the road and something's going to happen. A car will back out. A car will pull out and not see you in the mirror. This and that, that will happen. Anything can happen. So take it slowly and. Um, yeah, I would just, even though we have the right to be on the road, just like any vehicle, um, we're much more vulnerable on bicycles. So I think it's fair enough just to get out of the road, out of the way of um, vehicles on a busy road. I think everyone appreciates that, including the police. Yeah. Another tip to do with safety is don't wear headphones that completely block out I know there's some people who say, okay, that you shouldn't wear any headphones whatsoever. Um, I, I do admit that I wear my headphones, but I always hear what's going on. So don't wear like noise, noise blocking headphones where you can't hear anything except for the podcast or the music that you're listening to, because it's very important that you hear what's going on behind you and everywhere where you, where you can't see. Somebody might be hollering something behind your back and you'll bliss you'll be blissfully unaware and that could really result in a, in trouble so and obviously all sorts of mobile devices and don't be on your phone people it's dangerous. yeah and you can't rely on hearing as well no, yeah that's true yeah, that's true cars these days just yeah. are silent they can just be there creep up on you yeah, yeah definitely so. yeah that's true um another legal requirement is just sobriety that is you true. You cannot ride your bike intoxicated. Well, you can, but you can get pulled over and fined. And it will affect your driver's license as well. Will wow. it? Yeah, yeah, really. If you get pulled over um, for like drink riding, mm. it'll affect your, your driver's license. Well, which is, in my opinion, crazy, but something to be careful or be aware of. When you're riding with your mineral water, luckily it's just water. Well, I was actually, <laughs> this reminded me of. Max, what you just said, when I had my accident and I had to go to the hospital to get uh, 
X-ray and whatnot. They did do a blood test when I when I told them yeah, that. Right. Um, when I told I told them what happened uh, that I fell on my bike in a busy intersection in Marrickville, and yeah, by law they have to draw your blood and they will report it to the police. So I'm good. I was all good. I didn't, I, I didn't have anything to worry about. But yeah, I'm sure mm. it, it can maybe get you in trouble. Yeah. So I guess if you if you are drunk or intoxicated, um, it's just best to go slowly, um, not on the road yeah. at all, and quiet streets. Yeah. And um, it's, yeah, because yeah. it's better than having to drive. Oh. Drunk, of course. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's for everyone's safety, your safety, and for people around you. You know, let's be kind to each other, right? Mm, what a novel idea. Yeah, <laughs> in these days it feels like a novel idea, but let's just be more mindful of our surroundings, you know? I think that helps a lot. What yeah. else? Um, make yourself right. This is what I would say to people, even though it might not feel like um, a good idea at a certain time of the morning. Once you get going, get really warm and you get your blood flowing and breathing and yeah, it's the best thing you can do to feel good. You'll feel exhilarated, probably, I do, yeah. um, after, after it. And just helps um, kind of start the day with yes. a good attitude. Oh yeah, that's mm. so true. Mm. Especially if it's a nice day, you get a nice uh, light sweat on in the morning. It's a sunny day and you can kind of just cruise for cruise um, on your commute to work. It's definitely a great way to stay in shape. It certainly is a huge part of my my weekly um, exercising, uh, biking. It's because I buy if I bike to work five days a week, it's about 125 Ks, which means that I don't have to do any other exercise. So I don't have to go. Oh, that's true. 125 Ks a week is definitely more than I ride. Mm -hmm. Well, this is if I ride five days a week, which most of the time I don't. So it's probably like a uh, normal week for me would be like three, four days a week. But it's still, still nearly a hundred k. Yeah, yeah. But it's it saves me so much time. I don't have to go to the gym uh, after I finish work because I've already incorporated that whole exercise in my day. Plus, it takes me to work. Plus, it saves the environment. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's free. Well, mostly free. You don't, so, ca don't catch a virus on the way to work. Yeah, it's it's got that's so comfortable. That's comfortable. That's comfort. <laughs> that's comfort. Well, it's it's yeah. It's I can't I can't um, rave enough about biking. We, I love it. We have one minute left, which I think is enough time to answer this question from yes. Shelley. Hi, Shelley. What about wet weather riding? Oh, glad you brought that up. It's He's an massive, expert. Massive issue. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> massive just... issue. <laughs> <laughs> He's He's yeah. got it. <laughs> Yeah, Stu, Stu is a trooper. It can be pouring down, and when he comes to work, he'll be drenched, but he still rides. Whereas I'm a bit of a princess, and I don't do that. So, here you go. After all the years of trying, I have come to do my best thing, mm. which is motorcycle pants. Thanks to Laura for throwing those away and me having them. Um, yeah, these will keep you dry for about half an hour of riding uh, manual stuff. So they'll keep you out of trouble for half an hour, then you need to dry. This is a... Um, oh, it has wrist thingies. Yeah, it's kind of a good jacket. It's like not waterproof, because yeah. if it's waterproof, you just sweat under it. Yeah, um, oh yeah. Um, so it's water resistant, so it grabs all the rain and just sort of sits there and doesn't quite touch your skin for like half an hour, and then you've got to get it off and... Um, what about this waterproof helmet here? Oh, well. Look at this one. I think this is amazing. And when he's, it's raining. Yep. Um, there's no wind coming here. It's just like it's hilarious. I'm just smiling in the rain. I'm dry. And not yep. a bicycle helmet. It's got all holes. Yeah, no, that, it won't work. That's genius. Mm -hmm. And it works well? Yeah, really well. Insects and the thing. Oh, yeah, insects as well. Yeah. It looks a lot cooler than... Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. It looks a lot cooler. <laughs> Especially yeah. in these overalls. And look at these little stickers and everything. Oh, I love yeah. it. Yeah, I don't know where you get these. I think Japan. Oh. Um, oh. Or uh, did you get... What? Wait. Where did you get this? At the Bower? Uh, probably. Or at Op Shop. Or you something. can... 
you seriously come to the bower. We have so many. We have helmets. We have bike gear. We have bikes. Um, and more. There's everything. Everything under the sun. So come and have a look. We're open on the weekend. Um, uh, John and Heidi will be there keeping you company. I think. Thank you so much for all your questions. Thank you, Claire, Shelley, everybody else. Um, this was great, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that went very quickly. I hope we didn't uh, miss out any on any vital subjects. I think there is one more Facebook Live bike thing coming in September. Okay. We will update you. So um, if you have any more questions, I don't know what the topic will be for the next one, but. I'm sure we'll make it wacky and interesting like this was. I hope you found it hopeful. I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> I hope you found it helpful and hopeful. And um, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. See you around. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good weekend, everyone. Bye.